now. There's so many memories and so many firsts that have taken place that uh, it's, it's hard to put your finger on, on just one. Earlier this year, we brought you the story of Ken and Diana Roach, who for 16 years dreamed of having a family. In April, their prayers were answered when they became the proud parents of not one, but six children. It's a true love story that spans halfway around the world. Two grateful parents and six loving children we've come to know as the Cebu Six Pack. Got it. Want to go up the outside? It was in transition. The house had raised one family, been home to a second, and was being expanded to house what's affectionately being called the Cebu Six Pack. The deck awaited completion outside. Inside, Mark Peterson was drilling sheetrock screws into what would become a pantry to hold food for eight people. This area was basically our, um, our sitting area. I think we'll bring this one into Marlon and Herman's room. And then that area in there used to be where our hot tub was. Why do I look like I'm struggling? <laughs> and then we had to put up this wall here because that was not there. Perfect. Things may have looked a little discombobulated, maybe, but Ken and Diana Rote were ready, emotionally ready anyway. They'd wanted children for 16 years. When they decided to adopt, they found six brothers and sisters in the children's shelter of Cebu, the second largest city in the Philippine Islands. And what may have appeared uh, informal is merely what happens when a family of two has three months to become a family of eight. You see, the arrangements had come together so quickly but adoption is one of those things which just kind of sets its own schedule. Um, all these folks had to do was get the house ready. <laughs> That's all. You know, because when, when I think about the six kids coming, I get such a good feeling that all I can do is, is just kind of laugh and, and say, well. Are you getting excited about the trip? I don't know if that even describes it. It's sort of like a dream, a dream come true. <laughs> And after 16 years of waiting, Very nice to meet you. Ken and Diana Roach met their children. It was lovely, as if they belonged together, more a reunion than a first meeting. There comes Mary Jane. <laughs> there was some getting to know you activity at the hotel swimming pool and lots of papers to sign, more relaxation in the pool and interviews they never expected would be required, more swimming. And after a 19-hour flight, Marlon there could hardly sit still. Inside the terminal, there was twisting and peering. Here they come. Here they come. Yeah, that's got to be them. And finally, it was them, a brand new mom hugging her mom. Her six kids dressed alike, accepting the confusing introductions. This is Renante and Marisol. And a recent immigrant welcomed his best friend and extolled the good life. I have four-wheeler. Maybe you would love it. <laughs> and water skiing is maybe fun. You're going to learn it, and it's fun. Yeah, yep. it's cool. <laughs> it was cool. And a couple of weeks later, after things had quieted down and new students had ended their school day, yeah, we're minus one. There was a breakdown in communication. <laughs> he had a softball game. Diana wrote sounded comfortable when one might have expected her to be overwhelmed. This is my own bike. Here the pride, Elmer wrote, and everybody who could ride had a bike. Maricel wrote had cut a conversion for hers, so two-year-old Mary Jane wrote could ride too. And when the new dad came home. Hi, Dad. Hello, boys. Hello, girls. It looked, yeah. well, it definitely didn't look like people who just a month ago had been unrelated on opposite sides of the world. It was before we went to bed last night and I asked him, I said, so does this feel at all foreign to you? <laughs> and it was no. And it's, it's all very natural. And it, it's like we've been doing it all our lives. Don't ask me why. It's all very natural. Diana and Ken wrote, say, God had much to do with creating this family. And we just put it in God's hands and, and uh, we ran with it. They ran with it, and they're still running. And eight people, two parents and six kids, all have the family they longed for. We're happy to report the Rote family, all eight of them are doing remarkably well. And in fact, the kids 
Well, they sent some well wishes to Diana. Oh. In light of your recent accident, which we yes. all know involved a horse, so take a look at this one. <laughs> and they can see it right you know, there. that's a good picture. Your horse is waiting for you. Yes. And then this good. one, which I do think is really an uncanny likeness. <laughs> Kids, very good job with this. Yeah, But great. obviously they were thinking of you. Very yeah. nice of them. Well, these are great. They're already making me feel better. Now, we should let you know that if you want more information on the Children's Shelter of Cebu or wish to make a contribution, contact us here at the station and we'll have that number for you. As a follow-up to our first story, which aired in April, we recently visited the kids at school and joined them for their first ski outing at Wild Mountain. Playing piano is something Maricel dared not dream about six months ago. Her school journal reflects a very different reality. You know where I come from. I come from Philippines. My teacher in Philippines is really bad. She's so strict she will beat her pupils when they make little sin. She'll beat them. It's a bit of a struggle for them, especially because of the English language, but they are doing well. Yeah. Um, how about, how about oh, the inside? Try to get some glue in there and paste it. They're very quick to catch on, and we explain how to do something. They, oh yeah, and they take off with it and they go. Are you ready to go skiing? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun. Fun, something no child should be denied. Yet something these kids knew little about before being taken in by CSC. The orphanage did a really good job of, of getting these kids prepared for adoption. And it's made our, our life uh, very easy. Looks good. Once in a while the kids will start talking about, you know, their, their birth mother and father and, and uh, you know, stealing sugar cane off of sugar cane trucks and stuff like that and so on. And, and then we just kind of get shook back into reality of how bad these kids once had it. That's it, Herman. Keep the wedge. Keep the wedge. There you go. You know, even when we have tough days, um, you know, they're still they're still happy. They're still happy to be here um, because they they do remember what life was like and um, and how nice it is now. And, and we don't want them to ever take that for granted. Yeah, mama. Yeah, mama. They're all pretty coordinated, and they love snow. They don't like the cold yet. <laughs> We keep telling them it's going to get colder. Woo! Ah! Woo! Oh, God, I All right. Snow. Remember, we have to have our ski theming right up the hill. For the most part, um, we have a lot of fun. Good job, Peanut. Woo! <laughs> I love it. We have to have a humorous side, or it just would not work. <laughs> Ken and Diana say it's nothing short of a miracle, crediting family, friends, and a great deal of faith. Life is uh, awfully fulfilling. And some days it's, uh, it's tough. Some days are just absolutely incredible. It was meant to be.